Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be having a look at the Gramistola Action. Now we're going to be covering the care requirements, why I recommend this tarantula and I'm going to introduce a scale of 1 to 10 on whether this tarantula will be suitable for you. Now I'm not going to throw out terms like beginner or experienced keepers only, I just want to make this scale just to give you a guide of how difficult this tarantula is or the tarantula in question is to looking after. Now I've known people that have started with uh, peaceful theory and have done absolutely fine I know people have started with cobalt blues and done absolutely fine with OBTs, all of the nasty old worlds that I can think of. I've had people in my life that have brought these tarantulas as their first and they have done absolutely fine. This 1 to 10 scale is purely about the ease of care or how difficult these tarantulas are to care for and I just want, chose 1 to 10 because it just gives me that little bit more range to sometimes put a tarantula that may be in the middle close to the beginning or further towards the end depending on the species. So if we say 1 is the easiest tarantula to take care for and 10 one of the most advanced tarantulas to keep these will be the tarantulas that are new to the hobby and people don't really have a grasp on you know how to successfully keep them yet. I don't have any 10s in my collection I would say the highest in my collection is probably a 6 or a 7. I thought I would do another care video on the Gramistola Action because I can tell you something now I am absolutely in love with this species of tarantula and I just cannot wait to get more. At the moment I've just got a spiderling which I've had from a very small size but it is just one of it is just one of the most fantastic Gramstola species I've ever seen. It's just got so much character to it and if you show me this spider and told me and tell me anything about it I would not guess it was a Gramistola. There's just something about the tarantula that just makes it a little bit more feisty for a new world uh, terrestrial tarantula. I've opened the enclosure before and it won't just stand there still, it will wander around the enclosure when I take the top off, almost like it's investigating what's going on. The takedowns are just absolutely phenomenal every time we do a feeding. It's never refused food unless it's in heavy pre mold and it's just a fantastic tarantula. So if you don't have this tarantula in your collection and maybe you're looking for something a little bit more feisty than your you know, Brachypelma hammer eyes or your Tritocalcal albopilosums or albopilosuses, now as it is, then I would highly recommend the Gramistola Action. So we'll get into covering some of the care requirements for this tarantula. It is pretty straightforward stuff, so enjoy the video. The Gramistola Action is slowly becoming one of my favourite New World species. This tarantula hails from southern Brazil and is often referred to as the Brazilian woolly black or the Brazilian red rump tarantula. Now this spiderling that I'm showing you I have had for about three months now and I can just say it has just blown me away that a Gramistola can have the attitude that this little guy or gal has. Females in this species tend to live for about 15 to 20 years and can reach a leg span of 8 inches while the males still reach the impressive leg span but tend to look a lot more leggy and only survive for about 6 years. Being a New World Tarantula, these do possess the urticating hairs found on the abdomen of most New World species. They can rapidly kick these hairs off of their abdomen as a defence mechanism to keep unwanted predators out of their vicinity. As somebody who has never been in contact with these urticating hairs, I cannot say how painful they are, but I do hear that they are like the fibreglass insulation that you get in lofts and wall cavities which causes this irritation of the skin and just lasts for days and sometimes even weeks. Now going back to the reason why this is slowly becoming my favourite tarantula, it is all down to the feeding response. I feed this tarantula about two to three small crickets at this size you see now once a week, every Thursday to be precise. And oh my god, I have seen some of the most ferocious takedowns from any tarantula come from this tiny little Gramistola spiderling. There is a link in the description to my TikTok channel where I post all of my feeding clips so head on over there to check out some of the most awesome feeding clips from a Gramistola you will ever see. As far as husbandry goes for this tarantula it is pretty simple. All you need is about 2-3 inches of substrate for a spiderling keeping one corner of this moist at all times, a hide, some fake foliage and a water dish. 
As far as temperament goes, I have yet to see this tarantula kick his. I have yet to see it throw up a threat posture. The only thing I would give you caution towards is the feeding response this tarantula can have. Honestly, I've seen it dart from one end of the enclosure to the other just to trace down a tiny pinhead cricket. So do not stick your hand directly into this enclosure under any circumstances. Now as far as temperatures go, I keep this tarantula at room temperatures. I have got a oil heater in the tarantula room now. This is to maintain the temperature at about 22 to 24 degrees throughout the whole year. So do not feel the need to place heat mats or any other directional heat directly onto this tarantula, as this could result in fast rapid dehydration and the loss of a spider. I do provide all of my animals with a day night cycle which is just as the sun rises and sun sets I just basically open the curtains. I do not provide any special lighting in my animal room. Being a ground dwelling spider that is an opportunistic burrower, the more hide you give this tarantula the more likely you are going to see it out during the daytime as it will feel more secure. Mine tends to stay to the entrance of its burrow until I take the top of the enclosure off which then it goes into investigative mode. On my scale of 1 to 10 I give the Gramostola Action a solid 3. This is only due to the fact that my tarantula and my experiences seem to suggest that this requires a little bit more moisture than the standard Gramostola species. When it comes to housing an adult Gramostola Action I am going to be doing exactly the same as I house my Gramostola Pulchras which is in these Exoterra Fornarians. These are wide and shallow, providing a safe space for a terrestrial tarantula while also allowing me to get plenty of substrate in and a hide. As I've said in previous videos, I highly recommend these for the arid terrestrial species. For a more of a moisture dependent one, it can still be managed, but you just have to keep on top of the moisture requirements by overflowing the water dish regularly. I'm yet to have a problem with these enclosures when it comes to the Gramostola Pulchrit, so I will definitely be using these for my Gramostola Action. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any comments down below. Now, I'll leave it up to you guys now. Which tranquil would you like me to cover in the next series? I've got a out of the Ceratogyrus sanderi, the Sandy Horned Baboon, or the Ornithoctus oreotibialis. Let me know down in the comments which you would like me to cover next in a video similar to this. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you again next week. Thank you, goodbye.